Oh, and uh, there's one more thing I had to point out for the Pentagon just now who uh, allows their um, cogs to be hacked by globalists so that the uh, they can bend reality into their favor. And that's what happened to me. Like I said, 314 Palm Drive. Uh, across the canal from me was uh, Martin Banda and Johnny Hall. And I had the perfect house that I earned my entire life. I paid my taxes. I served in the military. I used the GI Bill. I went and worked at a plant and the whole nine yards. And I never broke any laws other than, you know, I'd party and stuff every now and then. But I was grown out of that, you know, unbelievably. I've been kind of fluffing this just a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. Uh, there are certain tools of the trade uh, I'm not abusing anything or anything like that. I'm using every now and then uh, some psychedelic drugs that the Pentagon knows very well in their program that we did in the Army, by the way. Uh, how well those uh, uh, psychedelic drugs will help you, uh, you know, communicate or message there or... Uh, it just opens your mind up and what is normally uh, coming in aggressively all day every day for somebody that has to deal with what I have to deal with it like comes in even faster but it's in slow motion I know that's hard to explain it just comes in like a waterfall but it's in slow motion and even the AI that they connected me to can't keep up with it and I can see the big picture like unbelievably okay so you watch Minority Report, the Minority Report cogs. The global, America had cogs. They were using their own system, but their cogs weren't being, uh, well, and, and then those cogs were also natural. Like I said, that 77 gate is Gabriel, right? And they will actually find natural prophets and they were monitoring what they were uh, doing and they were using that to forecast the geopolitical arena, right? Warfare, basically. They weaponized it because the globalists came in behind them and hacked us and tortured us to bend reality into their favor. That's what they're doing, okay? It's not natural. So whenever I was at, before they started torturing me and caused me to lose everything that I own, to bend the reality of the white man in America losing their homes so that they can become the peasant class uh, while they flood the border with Mexicans. Uh, they actually tortured me for three years until I couldn't afford my house. I mean, constant beating you with electromagnetic technology that links into your resonating frequency off of your DNA and it's sophisticated, trust me. Uh, satellite technology and microwaves and the nanotechnology that was put into me in the army. And the army was monitoring, right? But anybody can hack it, okay? So the globalists hacked it and they tortured me while I was living at my home that was $175,000 homes, what I paid for it. It was on the water. It was perfect. It was awesome. It's worth $400,000 now. But after I was tortured for three years, I sold it to some friends of mine, good people. No, I don't have a problem with these people, the uh, Saladinos, or Saladinos, or Saladinos, yeah. I think that's how you say their name. Anyways, that's not important. They're Mexican, right? So that is how they bent reality into their favor. Instead of the white man living happy down on the bio like he was, he had to sell his house to Mexicans. And that's the, that's the theme that they want. They want Mexicans to come across the border to get to to create a new peasant class of white people who will basically just be either they're going to kill them all or they're going to be bums. And that's a whole lot about the Kentucky Fried Chicken and stuff. I'm not even a liberal. I'm a conservative Christian. But they were actually giving the Kentucky Fried Chicken to the liberals to get them out of the way so that the Mexicans can uh, come in and take over. But, I mean, excruciating waterboarding, ad advanced interrogation, this is high, highly sophisticated technology. Everything you see in the media is hyperbole. Waterboarding is what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, and advanced interrogation tactics. Trump was talking about extreme vetting, right? Well, they, they used all of that on 
a Lockheed Martin uh, cog, right, who had uh, developed a system for Lockheed Martin over the years through the messaging that I would get uh, the Gabriel's message, right? And they would just watch the message and use that to their advantage. Well, these globalists came in uh, recently, but right after Trump got elected, and they had a fit after Trump got elected, and they tortured me to try to bend my reality because my reality kind of manifests itself into reality just like Trump's uh, presidency, and he was married to the Soviet supermodel, and I was married to a woman from Latvia uh, who lived in Russia for a little while, but she's Latvian, by the way. So she, it, I married Oksana shortly before Trump married Melania, and then I, you know, I had to explain all of the pegging oil to Bitcoin and all of that, and uh, swear to God, all of this is true, okay? Uh, so, <laughs> I might have fluffed it a little bit on my end there, but... <laughs> Uh, Trump actually got pegged in the ass. <laughs> I can conjure up these. Uh, Trump said one time, he's got a rich imagination. <laughs> so, uh, so you see how all that played out there. Uh, <laughs> but what's taking place, and I shouldn't be happy or laughing or anything, but I'm in God's grace here, and God used me as a messenger to not only rope a dope, okay, Iran Contra, Iran Con Translate, Sad Am, Hussein, I'm explaining to you the whole godly message. That's what all of this was about. Now, this video is explaining to you what they're doing to the manifestors of reality, the cogs in the wheel, in order to bend reality into their favor. They tortured me for four years and cost me to lose everything that I own so that Mexicans could buy my house. That's the globalist model. See, that's God's message. I'm telling you a message. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm giving you a message as to how they are doing this. A, they already, they found the cogs using social media, by the way. Now these globalists have located and identified the cogs, and they're torturing them to bend reality into their favor. And what they want to do is push as many Mexicans into America or uh, immigration. It don't have to be just Mexicans, anybody. They want as many people to come into America as they possibly can uh, so that they can basically water down the middle class and then reign over us like peasants. That's what they're doing. They want us to live in a worse than a, it's a technocratic authoritarian dictatorship. It's worse than communism. They're controlling your fucking minds with satellites, the global puppeteering system, the Kentucky Fried Chicken that I've been talking about, okay, that's going around right now. Has nanotechnology in it. They tested it out on the troops. Can y'all hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? Are you deaf? Sad am who's sane, okay? So, yeah, that's what's going to happen to all of you Texas Rangers who has all of this information. If you don't run the Texas Ranger flyer playbook, they're going to do the same fucking thing to you, okay? You're, you're, you're not on, uh, you're going to, the, the Pentagon, I mean, what's y'all are fucking idiots too. All of you, they are hacking your minds now. And they're really hacking the cogs to bend reality into their favor. Okay? So I'm going to put that other uh, link down in the description that uh, uh, has to do with what I was just talking about uh, on a different front there. Uh, but I'll put that down in the description. And you can watch that one and tie it to what I just said. Again, I know y'all been paying attention here, but watch the uh, the video that I put in the description and tie it into everything that I just said. It might be more than one video. But, but yeah, if, if you've noticed, everything that happens to me happens in society. So if you, if you have a cog in a wheel and everything that happens to him happens in society, I got bushwhacked. As soon as I got bushwhacked, what happened? The whole world got bushwhacked by by the Kentucky Fried Chicken that's going around, 
right? Came out of uh, that Chinese Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah, supposedly that's where it came from. Who knows? I, I don't believe anything these assholes say. Uh, I think China's right now could just come out and say, we were running a military exercise and all of the rest of the world kept running with this uh, story. We didn't even lock down for but about a month. Uh, and then we opened back up. How come everybody else is still locked down? Well, that's a good fucking question. Uh, uh, China's not even eating the Kentucky Fried Chicken. They won't even eat it. They won't touch it. They've come. Their government has come out and said, we're not taking the Kentucky Fried Chicken. We've been listening to that guy down there in Texas uh, who sent us all of this uh, intel, and, he, and we're scared to take the Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah, yeah, their government came out and said, we're not taking any of this shit. What's that tell you? So what you got to do, China, is you got to go out, okay, and, uh, and tell, uh, tell the world that you ran a military exercise, and that's really all you did. That's what it was. That is literally what China was doing when they shut down for that. It was a literal military exercise. Literally. This isn't bullshit. It's a fact. They wanted to find out how fast they could shut down their uh, entire country in the event of a Kentucky Fried Chicken outbreak, okay? And, well, they opened back up a month later. How come the rest of the world still shut down and, and forcing everybody to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken when China's, re where supposedly it came from China, they're refusing to eat the Kentucky Fried Chicken? Because they know it's a whole, it's a, they, they, it was a military exercise. That's why. I mean, they know what's going on. And they, they, they either ran one hell of a con job, which more power to you, when you do say that, that that's what was going on in China, you're going to bury every Nazi in the world. And yeah, good job on that one. Uh, yeah, high five. You can call me a traitor if you want. But uh, after you call me a traitor, you're going to have to show this video to people to explain why I'm a traitor. And people are going to watch this video and go, is all of that too? Wait a minute. You mean they were just running a military exercise and then all of a sudden they opened back up and the whole other world was still running with all of the bullshit? Oh, well, man, how is he a traitor then? It kind of sounds like all of you are traitors. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Yeah, that, I'm not sure where that came from. Uh, that altar after they tortured me. I think that's DARPA. <laughs> so, uh, um, it looks like China has all of you by the balls right now. Uh, <clears throat> And, uh, yeah, pay real close attention to this video and the ones that I put down on the link there. President Putin had a conversation with Galikova, Miss Galikova, on his Twitter account after uh, I pointed some things out and said the KGB can't decipher some of this quantum uh, stuff as well as I can. So they shot it back to me as Galikov, and you know in the emails and Pinky in the Brain, Gollyzilla. I've already pointed this out. Golly Zilla was a uh, director Comey who said, good golly. Remember uh, when he was being uh, interviewed by the Senate hearing committee or whatever it was, wherever he was at, he said, good golly. Uh, and it's probably because he ended up learning a bunch of the information that I've shared with you. <clears throat> so, that was in Pinky and the Brain, and Gollyzilla, I think that's the actual name of the, uh, uh, that, that, that episode of the cartoon. So, I just wanted to, uh, that, that, you know, Comey, I've already mentioned this, Comey's a big giant guy, he's giant, he's like eight foot tall, right, and he said, good golly, and in Pinky and the Brain, you got Gollyzilla, and that entire uh, this all happened 20 years later. You know, this was written in 1990 and was uh, released in 1993. And the director of the FBI says, good golly. And that's what you call interdimensional water. And I'm the best at uh, interpolating it. So uh, director Comey, I just after Golly Cove was uh, who uh, the KGB sent back to me to let me know. Yeah, no, we're actually paying a whole lot closer attention than you realize. Uh, that was on President P 
Putin's uh, latest twi tweet there. You know, there's something I wanted to uh, send a message to Director Comey. Uh, Uncle Vlad just recently found out that he wasn't pulling my strings. I've been pulling his strings. But he's okay with that, believe it or not. Especially after all these great schemes I came up with that he doesn't have to uh, answer for. <coughs> he can just blame it all on me. Well, that's fine. <coughs> uh, that's why I was sending all this intel to DIA and the Army and the FBI and the CIA this entire time. Well, I figured I'd keep them up to speed uh, directly. Uh, that way, if they, uh, you know the Unabomber, Kaczynski, and all those guys that they tried to radicalize to set up to be something that they uh, originally hacked them to be. Well, that's not going to happen here because I have 500,000 time-stamped emails that everything that goes through my mind, I send it to the Intel community, including my dead nigger storage, which was in Pulp Fiction, and that is Alex Jones and the Texas Rangers, uh, not to mention the Church of Christ now. So, uh, yeah, your little trauma-based mind control operation that you uh, pulled off here is not going to work. Uh, as a matter of fact, it backfired on all of you, and at the end of the day, I did what I said I was going to do. I'll make all of you dumb niggers religious before this is over. <coughs> oh, and that's not racist, by the way. It's for a movie script, anyway. Uh, I'm just playing off of the Pulp Fiction. I actually called myself a nigger uh, there, so... Uh, that would be why you would need dead nigger stored. So you can't really say that I'm a racist when I'm calling myself a nigger uh, while I call a bunch of other people niggers. <laughs> None of them are black. Well, there are some black people at the Pentagon. So when I refer to the entire Pentagon to include all of the upper chain of command and uh, everybody there, basically, uh, who are all white Nazis at the end of the day, a lot of you are. How many Jews do you have in the uh, United States military? You don't have very many in there, do you? Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, they don't like Jews, I don't think. <laughs> so uh, they might end up liking Jesus before it's all over with. So I'm not being racist when I use the word nigger, okay? At all, zero, zilch, not at all. That just means slave. And uh, when I refer to the entire Pentagon as dumb niggers, well, that uh, please don't uh, call me a white supremacist for referring to white people as dumb niggers. Okay, thanks. What I find ironic, Pentagon, is you actually played a role in killing 22 veterans a day who are patriotic, uh, signed up to serve their country to fight in pointless wars, and you actually uh, assisted the people that were giving you the orders to use this uh, technology on them like guinea pigs uh, because they were nothing other than dumb niggers to you, only to find out at the end, after you had ran that program on them, uh, that your own technology ended up discovering that it could not touch my migraines, which made all of you look like dumb niggers. And that's what you are. And hopefully the ones that were uh, involved and cognizant of that entire operation that was being pulled off to use your veterans as guinea pigs so that you could test illegal technology out on them and link them up to AI, uh, only to find out later that you were being exposed the entire time, sad am who's sane. Those people will be rounded up by General Boudet at uh, United States Army Special Operations Command, who's going to discover that all of this is true. And after your military tribunals are over, I will have the pleasure of putting the bullet right between your eyes myself. <laughs>